I've always been against the idea of the press conference with the suit. Like, coaches don't wear suits. They wear suits twice, to a wedding and to a funeral. That's it. And it just always looks weird to me, but that makes that quote even more memorable when Dan Campbell put the suit on and said we're (laughs) going to bite some kneecaps. Oh, and they have been biting kneecaps. They may be biting them without Jamison Williams for a couple of upcoming weeks. It came out during the game last night, courtesy of Eric Woodyard of ESPN, that Williams is facing a two-game suspension under the league's performance-enhancing substances policy. Now, facing it and having it final are two different things. The league announces it when it's final. We're not supposed to know when the player is facing it. There are strict, at least on paper, confidentiality provisions that never get enforced, but... It might be that there's still an appeal that's pending, a hearing that needs to be held, a ruling that needs to be issued. If it comes out today, and Tuesday is usually the deadline for doing it because that's when the pay locks in for the week, the practice week gets started the next day. If it's going to be official for this weekend's game against the Titans, we'll hear it today. They've got the Titans this week at the Packers next week. Those are the two games he would miss if that two-game suspension, Devin, becomes official today. Just a, a tough break for whatever this is. And it's one of the things I'm sure you you probably said it a bunch of times too, is whenever these things come out, I hate that we never we never get the background of it of like what what this is. Because as soon as you hear PED, I know as a player, when I when I heard that, I was like, oh wow, somebody was taking something and they were cheating. Like that that's the thought process. But there's so many things on this banned substance list that you cannot take that they don't all lean into like this person gaining an edge. So I wish, and I understand it's, it's, it's private and and all these different things. But I just think when you think about this game and and you think about even uh, playing field and protecting the shield and the integrity of the game, sometimes it just seems like it would make sense to know exactly like what, what this is. And maybe you don't tell the, the thing that the person took, but just to know like, was this person gaining an edge on what they were taking or was this for something else that happens to be on the long, long, long list of banned substances? Because this guy, Jameson Williams, has been off to a good start. They talked about it all offseason, how it felt like he took the next step and he's had these big plays for this Lions offense. They use him so many different ways. You see him getting the ball on a run. Then obviously everybody knows what he does when he gets down the field and he's that deep threat. So... You know, obviously the Lions have a lot of weapons and Ben Johnson draws up so many unbelievable plays. But to lose this guy and what he brings, um, I think it could be a tough break for them. So we'll see how it works out. I just I just hope we get some clarity on exactly, you know, what this is. I've always been an advocate for transparency when it comes to PED violations, because without it, all we ever hear is I don't know how it happened. I took a supplement that had something in it. Like, there's never anyone who says, you got me. I thought it wouldn't be detected. I thought I could take this thing that would speed my recovery or that would help with my training. And I made a choice. I rolled the dice and it came up snake eyes. Nobody ever says that. It's always somebody put something in my supplement. I have no idea how this happened. It's not always that way. 99.9% of the time it's that way. And because the NFL doesn't release the information affirmatively, we never know. There's one little twist to the rules that allows the NFL to rebut if the player says something that isn't true. But there's a way to dance around it Mm. because they can never prove how you ingested it. All they can prove is what it was. And they don't care. That's the problem. They don't care how you ingested it. If it's in your system, you are punished. Strict liability doesn't matter how it got there, doesn't matter whether you meant to do it or not. But what that creates, Devin, is a way for anybody who did cheat to say, I didn't. And the problem is for the guys who actually didn't, they get that same cloud of suspicion as the ones who did, because they all said they didn't too. And it, and it changes the way we sometimes look at players. I, I know when you go throughout guys' careers and you know, the reason you could pop up on the PED list and get the suspension, it could be so many different reasons. But I know as like a fellow player and what you think of a player and it's like, wow, like 
they popped up on the PD list and, and maybe they had a long career or maybe this happens to be a year that they're having a big year, you right away, you think like, well, have they always been taking this or did something come up or is something else going on in their life? So I just think, like you said, some transparency here would make so much sense just to kind of get a better understanding of what a player is going through and what they did uh, and why they ended up, you know, with the suspension. Because I think, I do, I think it changes the way some players are viewed. And sometimes it could be right and, and, and you know, you have a, a reason to view them differently. And then sometimes it's like, hey, you're viewing someone differently in their whole career when you really shouldn't. This is maybe a one-time occurrence or maybe – this wasn't even anything to gain an edge and they just took something. But like you said, when a player says, Hey, I took this and we don't really, nobody ever really believes that they just kind of move on. The player comes back after suspension and then it's all over. So I, I do, I think it hurts the player and I think it hurts the way the league is viewed with how this thing is handled a lot of times. Williams was suspended six games in 2023 for a violation of the league's gambling policy that was when there were these weird little lines as to where you could and couldn't use your phone to bet on other sports and he got caught up in that i think it was eventually reduced to four Mm -hmm. games they had some changes they made during the season so this is his second suspension that is coming up uh and and again if it if it's final when it's final it's final today it'll be no james Williams for the titans game which I mean, it's the Titans, all due respect. But the Packers game is the one. That's the showdown that's looming at Lambeau Field because Green Bay looks pretty damn good and the Lions look pretty damn great right now. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk. Williams facing a two-game suspension for a banned substance. It feels like he can't quite catch a break, but what's your reaction to this news? I mean, obviously, it stinks, like you said. You know, uh, you, you hope this wasn't the reason for his breakout performance, but he was having a standout third season, you know, just having really his second disappointing game of the year in week seven. And with the way Jared Goff is playing right now, he's playing at an MVP level. You know, I mean, he's not Lamar Jackson, but he's not far off with some of the numbers that he's doing, certainly from an efficiency standpoint. And the last thing you want to see is when you lose Aiden Hutchinson on the defensive side of the ball to lose one of your key playmakers on the offensive side. But thankfully for them, they have a lot of other guys that could – Certainly fill the void. The running backs, you know what Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery do. Amara St. Brown, one of the best in the business. And maybe for fantasy managers, this opens up the door for Sam Laporta because while Jamison Williams wasn't a significant factor last year and really was, you know, kind of, I I think, a little bit of a hindrance for maybe what Laporta has not been able to accomplish. You know, maybe now we see a few more targets going his direction and we start to see who was the number one tight end coming into the season perform at a higher level because he's been one of the bigger busts. You know, regardless of position, certainly he was a guy that was expected to be a top three tight end, and he's nowhere close to that right now. So hopefully Laporta benefits in the two-game absence that Williams will be gone. I don't think this really hurts Jared Goff to a, a huge extent, uh, but it's definitely a, a loss that they'll feel because he's such a good field stretcher in terms of Jamison Williams, opens up things, but clearly the targets have not been there the last month or so, but the production has been. So it's just frustrating to lose a player like this who was having such a good start to the season. Hey, you talk about losing players. Jamie, lots of big injuries around the league, and I'm certain we're going to continue to dive more into this this week. But Jaden Daniels now week to week. Deshaun Watson out for the year. Same goes for Brandon Ayuk. Chris Godwin we saw with that brutal injury Monday night. If we're getting an early look at that waiver wire, maybe who are some targets we should be eyeing? Yeah, you know, it's, it's one of those weird situations where there's not exactly a one-for-one one replacement, you know, because Brandon Ayuk goes down. I don't think Ricky Pearsall's there yet, but he's somebody you certainly want to add. Jalen McMillan, as we talked about, somebody who could step up, got eight targets tonight, but he's not necessarily going to become a must-start fantasy receiver. I do think Kate Otten is worth adding because not only tonight, but really the last month he's become more involved. And if you lose both of the receivers for Tampa Bay, as we know, then you're going to see him hopefully continue to produce like we saw in this game against the Ravens. So he's the most coveted player, I think, regardless of position, followed closely by Tua Tungavailoa. You know, we've been saying for the last couple of weeks, you know, try and get ahead of it, get Tua just in case he does get cleared, is able to return in week eight. And you know what he's capable of. And you mentioned it, Jaden Daniels goes down, the quarterback position has been sort of up and down for a lot of fantasy managers. I mean, think about it. Baker Mayfield, who's been top three at the position, just lost his top two receivers. Uh, Brock Purdy just loses Brandon Ayuk, and who knows if Debo Samuel will be able to play dealing with the pneumonia situation that put him in the hospital. You got Geno Smith, who's leading the NFL in passing yards, coming into Week 7, 
and he now loses maybe DK Metcalf for this week. So there's a lot of things going on at the quarterback spot. If Tua is still sitting out there, he's available at 50% of leagues on CBSports.com. He's going to be a must-start quarterback right away against the Arizona Cardinals, who, as you alluded to, just gave us over 300 yards passing to uh, Justin Herbert, who has not been a good fantasy quarterback. Two has been. So it's great for Tyree Kill. It's great for Jalen Waddle. It could be great for fantasy managers also. Absolutely. And we know what Tua does on that field to guys like Tyreek, to guys like Waddle, completely changes the way that offense works. But we'll be looking forward to that waiver wire and more from you later. Thanks so much, Jamie. Xin chào tất cả mọi người đã quay trở lại với kênh của mình nha Ngày hôm nay mình sẽ tiếp tục hướng dẫn các bạn làm vòng tay Và vòng tay hôm nay của mình sẽ có từ con dã gạo Bây giờ mình sẽ bắt đầu làm nhé mọi người Xin chào tất cả mọi người đã quay trở lại với kênh của mình nha Ngày hôm nay mình sẽ tiếp tục hướng dẫn các bạn làm vòng tay Và vòng tay hôm nay Và vòng tay hôm nay của mình sẽ có từ con trồn nhỏ Bây giờ mình sẽ bắt đầu làm nha mọi người Xin chào tất cả mọi người đã quên à, đã quay trở lại với kênh của mình ngày hôm nay mình sẽ tiếp tục hướng dẫn các bạn là vòng tay vòng tay hôm nay của mình sẽ có từ con trồn to bây giờ mình sẽ bắt đầu làm nhé mọi người à, đầu tiên là mình sẽ xóa hạt chữ nha đầu tiên là mình sẽ xóa với màu xanh nha. xanh bắn mạng nha Mọi người ơi, đây là màu xanh của mình này Đây phần đầu tiên của mình nha mọi người Mọi người ơi, đây là phần đầu tiên của mình Bây giờ tiếp theo mình mình sẽ xỏ Tiếp theo mình sẽ xỏ màu hồng nha Mọi người ơi, đây là phần màu hồng của mình này Đây là màu hồng của mình nha mọi người Mọi người ơi, đây là phần màu hồng của mình Mình tiếp tục với màu xanh lạ, à, xanh da trời nhé mọi người Mọi người màu thứ ba của mình là màu xanh da trời Màu thứ ba của mình nha mọi người, màu xanh da trời nhá à, Màu thứ tư của mình sẽ là màu, màu vàng nhạt Mọi người ơi, vàng nhạt của mình này Đây là vàng nhạt của mình nha mọi người Mọi người ơi, đây là màu vàng nhạt Rồi mình sẽ tiếp tục nha Mình sẽ tiếp tục là mình xỏ hạt màu nha Nhưng mà đưa lấy Nhớ Đưa lấy Đưa lấy 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 Về với con gì nhỉ Con Phương nào Phương nào Phương hành như ta À, biết được Nói thế ai như thế được Em, anh Nó lại giới thiệu cho một em đừng mẹ À, Phương người nhỏ 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 đeo kính tròn gì Đấy, con nào con gì vậy Đồ... Biết rồi, biết rồi, biết rồi Tôi đừng nhìn đế ở nhà nó bán khô rồi Đấy Nó lại giới thiệu cho ta ăn nó Hay như ta mà <cười> Lại, lại, lại Săn hồng hài nhi vậy Mà mà nhi <cười> <cười> Hôm nay là gì? Em nhớ đến em 
còn cười ờ, hôm nay em bảo là em hôm nay không phải niềm vui lý em gặp bọn này là mười ôi nhà trai nó kiểm tra khủng khiếp luôn bọn nó lớn lắm luôn đấy không thể nào mà chấp nhận nổi sao mà bây giờ bọn nó lớn thế không hề nhỉ có thu một buổi không sao chờ đây thu ba tuổi má thế này thu ba tuổi anh thu được một tuổi gì em không có hứng thú tiền xì xì tiền đâu mà đi Ừ. nhà giò xin có nhiều đồ sẵn ừ. không hay nhi mọi người ơi chưa vòng của mình sắp xong rồi nha thì chín em chín em từng từng nhìn em thôi mai xin em nhìn em anh ơi em cho anh em cho em thơm một cái nhá thơm một cái thôi cái gì nhỉ không em thơm à em thôi con má anh này Chọn chiều cái thoi lên lời vơ 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 Mình chưa biết vì sao Mọi người ơi, vòng của mình sắp xong rồi nha Đây đây nha, vòng của mình hoàn thành rồi Video của mình đến đây là kết thúc Nếu các bạn thích thì cho mình xin một like, một chia sẻ và đăng ký kênh nhé Các bạn ơi, đây là vòng của mình đã hoàn thành Video của mình đến đây là kết thúc Nếu các bạn thích thì có thể cho mình xin một like, một chia sẻ và đăng ký kênh nha Các bạn ơi, vòng của mình đã hoàn thành rồi này Video của mình đến đây là kết thúc Nếu các bạn thích thì cho mình xin một like, một chia sẻ và đăng ký kênh nhé Buồn mũ quá Mọi người ơi, cố gắng lên cho em xin một buổi picnic Chà hiểu không? Em chỉ cần một buổi thôi Em chỉ cần một bộ ảnh ở trong tháng 10 này thôi Làm ơn cho em một buổi picnic Nha Cố gắng lên để được đi cắm trại nhé Này, này, này Trời cứ đi cố rồi, rồi, rồi. Cô đầu đi cổ thôi Thế cho nên